Hi, my name is Gainsey Akvels. I'm innovation lead working for largest mobile operator in Latvia, company LMT. We are Latvia's most connected mobile operator for more than 25 years. Our core business is voice and data services, but we are diversifying our business and looking for new future revenue streams. One of such areas where we see our potential in future is drones. Why drones? Well, drone technologies and industry is growing very rapidly. Possibilities and applications the drones will bring to many industries like agriculture, forestry, energy, and many more are almost endless. Most of those drone solutions will be used beyond visual line of sight. But for now, it's one of the challenges because of legislation and also some technological limitations. Authorities want to be sure that such flights could be done safely and that drones could be reached whenever it's needed during the whole flight. Most common technologies used for command and control link today, for example, Wi-Fi, is limited in range. But we see that cellular networks could help to solve this challenge. As cellular networks could be optimized to fit requirements for airspace users and provide safe, secure connectivity and C2 links. We believe that it will serve as an enabler for beyond visual line of sight flights in the future. That is why we are looking into mobile infrastructure possibilities and research existing cellular network. Last year, in 5G territory, we demonstrated beyond visual line of sight flight, fully controlled using mobile network as communication channel. This year, we went a few steps farther, and on 2nd September, we demonstrated cross-border drone flight from Latvia to Estonia. Demonstration goals were to see, is it possible to do this uh, flight with network configuration as it is right now for terrestrial usage without any special network changes? Second, to do fast and safe switch between the networks during the flight. This demonstration was done within the scope of EU Project Com for Drones and based on future use case of Rail Baltica project. Rail Baltica is building railway that will connect all three Baltic state capitals, starting from Tallinn to Riga and Vilnius. Future vision of uh, representatives of this project is that the drones could be used for inspection purposes during construction process and monitoring railway when it's ready and operational. So our aim was to look into cellular network capabilities and investigate them in uh, border zone. To make it happen, we partnered up with company SPH Engineering, who helped us with drone and ground control uh, station setup. We developed our own two SIM card uh, communication device that was attached to the drone and connected to the drone's control module. Also, we partnered up with uh, Estonian network provider Telia Estonia, as one of our goals was to do the fast and safe switch between the networks during the flight. In one of the first uh, preparation st stages, we defined target network requirements that we thought uh, would be sufficient and safe uh, for drone connectivity services. We checked utilization also of, of uh, base stations in designated area and also made several uh, point-based physical network measurements to get to know situation with network availability on Latvian and Estonian side. Those steps helped us to decide in what height drones should be flown during the demonstration. What we get to know is that the best coverage and uh, network parameters are between height of 40 meters and 70 meters. So uh, our demonstration flight was done in 65 meters. In next uh, several test flights, uh, we uh, measured even more network parameters to check whether we meet our network EPI targets and try to define switching point between Latvian and Estonian networks. Network measurement results proved our assumption 
that there should be sufficient network availability even with existing terrestrial configuration. Signal strengths that you can see here got better as we gained altitude because there are no obstacles in the air and that could affect uh, signal quality. But at the same time, signal noise parameters decreased. As we gained altitude, more and more uh, base stations were seen by the drone. Nevertheless, average cell quality parameters uh, were met. Downlink and uplink speeds were sufficient for critical and non-critical communication, as only a few kilobyte or hundreds of kilobyte, uh, kilobyte uh, messages for this purpose must be sent. If we compare network EPI targets that we have set to actual data from the flight, we see that in almost all parameters, we surpass them with a good margin. Only the latency position is around our target 50 milliseconds, which in my opinion is good enough result by itself. Let's have a quick look at the video, which will show more insights how it happened. So, we've been able to demonstrate that it is possible to switch between mobile networks without affecting flight safety. We also demonstrated that configuration of existing network can provide sufficient network EPI parameters despite down-tilted antennas. We get to know that border zone is a very challenging environment for flights using cellular network. It is not possible to predict the exact switching point. And also, we experienced different network conditions almost each time when we went uh, to the border zone for the flight. So definitely, further network investigation and optimization is needed in areas like interference mitigation, optimization of power control, monitoring, and uh, selection of serving cells. But nevertheless, we strongly believe that cellular networks can and will play an important role in enabling communication within very low-level airspace, as cellular networks could be optimized to fit requirements for airspace users and provide safe, secure connectivity and C2 links. Mobile technologies can provide reliable drone identification, like broadcast or network. Mobile operators are also leading in data protection and privacy, which is very important nowadays. Mobile technologies are constantly evolving. With 5G, there will be even more possibilities to connect even more devices, have faster transmissions and lower latencies. Mobile networks are global, interoperable and scalable, which means if it works for one, it will work for all. So, in conclusion, I want to say that future is promising, and we certainly see ourselves as an important player in it. So thank you for listening, and I'm ready to answer your questions.
Over the horizon, in what is tomorrow, lies the unknown. Applications we can't imagine today will change the way we live and suddenly become the norm. 5G is the path forward. However, it requires a staggering investment that means missteps aren't an option. Cisco provides the most important pieces of that investment. A flexible software-based service creation platform, security, and automation. Pay-as-you-grow licensing removes the risk in your journey to 5G and gives you the agility to move quickly. With a proven, open, and cloud-native architecture designed for now and the future, you get best-in-class network scaling that is simple and automated. Proprietary barriers disappear and new revenue opportunities open. Services can be deployed when and where customers need them. Only Cisco provides innovative technology leadership that spans network operators, enterprises, the public sector, IoT, and web providers. Bringing the expertise in security to support you every step of the way. With a flexible cloud-to-client approach, you can be ready to provide the unimagined. Between the needs of today and the trajectory of tomorrow, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. We are the Riga Freeport, the one that borders the European Union and Russia. The world may have seen bigger ports, but when it comes to quality, whether it be our team, technology, or logistics, not many ports have the same standards as we do. We will be glad to work with you and support you in developing infrastructure. We will meet and guide your ships to the pier, and we will send them to their next destination. Riga Freeport. Big in business. Big in quality.